Good morning or good afternoon or good evening, depending where you're connecting in from today. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your busy day to uh, attend another Crank Emetech webinar. Of course, today's topic is uh, overcoming the hurdles that you may face um, when, uh, when developing embedded GUI applications that really can impact your time to market um, so it's really, what can you do to overcome those hurdles when developing, of course, with uh, ST Microelectronics STEM32 devices and Crank Emetech Storyboard. Uh, just to let you know that today's session will be recorded. So that means that if you need to drop off for any particular reason, or maybe you have a colleague uh, that you think would benefit from today's uh, topic of discussion, uh, once we uh, kind of get it posted up, you will have an email that will provide you access to the on-demand webinar. And of course, then this live session will flip over to our on-demand section and can be accessed at any point in time. If you do have questions, uh, please feel free to submit them. We will be having Q&A at the end of today's session. And of course, if you haven't followed us on any of the social media platforms, we are active on Twitter, LinkedIn, and of course, Facebook. And you can follow us under uh, Crank Software, and you can use the, uh, the hashtags of GUI development or Crank Storyboard. We are lucky today uh, to have several guest speakers uh, from ST Microelectronics. We have Roman Luden, who is a field application engineer for ST. Uh, we also have Nick Schultz, who is a field application engineer uh, here at Crank Amitech. And of course, myself, Scott Snyder, I am the product marketing manager uh, for Crank Amitech and of course, our GUI development tool storyboard. Today's agenda. So we're going to first dive into an overview on the STEM32 hardware uh, from their MCU offerings all the way up to their MPU offerings and choosing and helping you really kind of decide which uh, hardware is right for your GUI implementation. Uh, next, we'll dive into uh, an overview of who Crank Software is and Storyboard. And then we'll dive into, you know, how you can utilize Storyboard uh, to leverage both uh, ST's STEM32 MCU and MPU devices, and really how it makes it easier to overcome uh, those typical challenges that we uh, come across when developing GUI applications in today's market. And then, of course, uh, we will dive into Storyboard and we'll show you live in action. With that being said, I'm going to pass things over to Roman, who uh, will kick, kick, kick things off. Yes, uh, thank you uh, and good morning, uh, good afternoon and good evening uh, again, uh, everybody connecting from uh, either side of the of the world. So I'm happy to be here today with you. Um, let me just make sure I'm sharing the, the right screen. Yes, uh, perfect. So hello and, uh, and welcome in, in our today webinar. Uh, first of all, a big thanks to, to Crank uh, Emetic uh, uh, for inviting us uh, here today. Uh, so I'm very excited to be here and spend a little bit of time talking about STM32 and their fit for uh, for graphics. Uh, my name is uh, Roman Roman Ludin. I am based in uh, our Prague uh, office in Czech Republic. Uh, so it's uh, starting to be a nice evening for me. Um, and one of my roles in ST is to follow uh, as well uh, applications like uh, graphic user interface applications of our customers to support them in terms of, uh, let's say, our hardware, what uh, is the best product to select for a given display interface, for a given display type, and also collect the feedback from you, uh, our customers, uh, to make sure that our future product roadmap and ecosystem offering will be in line with your needs and expectations. So that's, what, that's uh, one of my roles. And today, clearly, I will uh, talk uh, quickly in a short time, but giving you, I think, nice overview of uh, uh, how to start when um, uh, thinking of implementing a graphic user interface in your end product and uh, which product to, to pick from the STM32 family. Uh, don't hesitate to drop any question at any time if something is unclear or you would like to understand any specific points into the chat, and we'll be happy to answer all those questions at the end of, um, of the webinar. 
So talking about uh, graphics, of course, the graphical user interface is uh, typically part of HMI, so human to machine interface. And uh, like most of the applications, this uh, went through a certain evolution in the past decades. But it's one that is really clearly visible to all of us, because uh, if you look around your house and your office uh, or, or in different stores, uh, uh, the applications have changed. And typically the HMI, this is the part of the application which interface with the human, with the end user. And so it's mostly visible. On our example with the, with the room thermostat, of course, if I would to be building a new house or making a reconstruction of my current one, uh, most likely I would not select this room thermostat, but I would more rather look for this one, which does not only look better, but also uh, offer a certain level of connectivity and, and uh, the, the user experience is uh, much convenient. Even though I know, for example, my mother would still <laughs> prefer to the old one, which is very easy, easy, easy to use as well. Uh, but at the end, it's really on the on the user preference. Uh, nevertheless, clearly we can see across uh, different market segments uh, the need of uh, uh, upgrading the current HMI's graphic close interfaces to new, more modern uh, look and feel, or uh, introducing those uh, to the applications where they were not yet uh, being present. So this is also the way to differentiate versus the end competitors. Uh, market or make a segmentation of the end products from some basic uh, to high-end um, offering. So one quote uh, I, I really love and um, I, I'm always happy to, 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 to show is this one from Mr. Martin Leblanc, uh, which uh, said a user interface is like a joke. If you have to explain it, it's not that good, <laughs> which is clear because the user interface must be in one way simple to use, uh, user friendly uh, and self explaining. Uh, you don't you, you should not open a user manual when starting to uh, to work with, uh, with the user interface. And that's what we uh, in ST together with our partners such as uh, Crank and Metec is uh, are trying to bring uh, to our customers. So you achieve this, uh, this target uh, in an easy uh, and efficient way, uh, which at the end, uh, of course, you won't because the time to market is, is very critical. If you look on, on classical uh, graphic user interface application, and if I take the example of a smartwatch, which is not the most common application uh, for STM32, but there are some smartwatch application based um, also on STM32 products. Uh, uh, but I like it because uh, you, it's a simple one to, to demonstrate. And uh, this application, we can cut it in a couple of, uh, of layers, uh, really starting from the top of the, from the display itself. Uh, and this is where we as ST um, cannot really bring you the display themselves because we are not producing any displays. But we can uh, help to connect you with our partners uh, uh, that masterize the selection of the display and uh, they can help you to, to pick the right one if you are not sure which one to take. The, the bottom layer uh, underneath is uh, of course the art design. So this is the, these are the graphic elements that are visible uh, to the end user. And here again, either you, you masterize this on your end or there are external companies that can help to, to create all the nice icons, animations to make your user interface really attractive. But where we are really bringing uh, the, the added value and uh, can accelerate your design are all the things below. So starting from uh, the graphical libraries themselves, which are making all the graphical operations, uh, down to the low level uh, drivers, uh, which are then interfering and interfacing uh, with, the, with the hardware of your selection. And of course, talking as a silicon supplier company uh, representative here, uh, at the end, um, our interest is to uh, make sure that you uh, select and, and pick uh, our product uh, like a STM32 uh, uh, microcontroller or microprocessor. Uh, of course, if I would come and, and offer you only the, the, the microcontroller itself, uh, probably you won't be so much excited uh, uh, because how, how to start, how to uh, make your first connection, how to make the first evaluation, is this really what I want? Uh, is this what my marketing guys from the marketing department wants? Is this what my boss wants uh, from the user interface? Uh, and probably you would have to really uh, invest a lot of time 
making your first UI uh, alive. Uh, but with with our hardware and with the tools of our partners, uh, we can really bypass and shortcut these first steps and accelerate them very quickly. So uh, you can be very, very um, efficient on this. So as I said, um, we do our best to bring you the best hardware and the best software uh, tools, products, ecosystem, documentation either directly from ST or from our partners through a uh, really rich ecosystem of, uh, of uh, tools and solutions around the STN32 uh, to make your life as easy as possible. The important point uh, to say also here is that um, you as an end customer uh, have a nice uh, benefit of selecting the, the solution of your, of, your, of your choice because there are different ones on the market. Uh, each of them has some pros and cons. But at the end, it's you to, to make the, the final choice. In terms of um, the things that you have to consider in the beginning uh, of uh, designing graphic close interface, of course, first of all, it is the hardware. So what type of display do I have? Uh, size, type, um, interface, uh, uh, which will already help you and give you some guidelines which kind of uh, microcontroller or microprocessor you will need to achieve this uh, uh, this um, uh, graphic clues interface. And then uh, the next uh, thing that you have to consider uh, as well is uh, the, the overall ecosystem. So uh, which type of solution do I want? Uh, which kind of firmware architecture? Uh, which tools will I need? Uh, uh, can I have some hardware tools in the beginning uh, allowing me to, to develop um, first mockups without uh, investing in own hardware? Um, in which form the libraries are coming? So all are the things that uh, that uh, normally our customers are, are looking into in the beginning of the design. So let me let me go through quickly of uh, some of the main points, uh, mainly focusing on the hardware side, because then uh, uh, Nick will talk about the, the crank solution for, for GUIs, uh, which is part of, uh, of the ecosystem offering at yet. So if you look on the hardware, uh, and I sp will speak, uh, of course, mainly about uh, the, the microcontroller or the microprocessor uh, option from the STM32 family, uh, the main and the first selection factor will be what graphical interface do I want to reach or do I want to implement? So uh, what will be the size of my display? What will be its resolution and the color depth that I will need? Um, what um, graphical uh, interpretation do I want? Do I go with the static, uh, more static menus with simple graphics? Or do I want to have some uh, abstracted animations or even play like a uh, motion JPEG videos? Uh, all these are the, the first um, parameters that you have to consider uh, before starting to look uh, uh, into the given microcontroller or microprocessor. Uh, the good news is that with STM32 family, uh, since the family is, is, is very big and it's keep growing uh, uh, year by year, uh, today it's more than 1,200 different part numbers uh, where basically each of them could uh, could be uh, the control of your graphic close interface. The question is, which one, which display, and which uh, performance do we expect from, from this graphic close interface? For the simple ones, uh, uh, we do have a really increasing demand uh, from from uh, our customers on on simple, more entry level graphic close interfaces, uh, uh, which could be represented by a smaller displays, let's say 320 times 240 uh, display connected over serial uh, parallel in the SPI interface, sorry, uh, with its own uh, RAM for a frame buffer. And this kind of displays you could really drive even with a subdollar uh, device like a step 22 G0. If you need to uh, uh, provide graphic loose interface for battery operated application, probably you would have to also take care of the power consumption of the device. Then the nice families to look after is L4 or U5. And going up uh, to more advanced systems, uh, today the recommendation would be one of the members from the H7 family. And there are few to look after. I will share with you a table uh, later on that could also help you to, to make the right choice. 
And finally, uh, if you would like to base your design on a Linux, then uh, you have to go with the microprocessor, which today is the STM32MP1 line. So overall, you have all these um, options. And uh, of course, some of the products are a little bit more suitable for uh, GUIs. Uh, and uh, let, let's take a look why. So Rob, the main before we go there, Roman, just mm -hmm. before we go there, I have, a, I have a poll actually that I'd like to share for everybody just to, to ask them, yes. which uh, STEM32 device uh, do you use or what, what, what one are you looking to use uh, in your next GUI application? So I'll just open the polls for everybody's for a couple of minutes just to kind of give you a range of hardware selection from uh, uh, all the different types that, uh, that ST has to offer. And uh, we'll take a look at that and I'll just leave it open for about another you know, five, 10 seconds just to get uh, the, the votes coming in. Thanks, thanks for uh, your answers uh, in, in this pool. Of course, it's always interesting for us to, to understand uh, where is the, the main market and where do we have to invest the most. Uh, so, as I said, some of the devices are more suitable for uh, implementation of, of GUIs, uh, especially the more advanced GUIs where the expectation in terms of uh, display size, resolution, and, and the graphic performance is higher. And uh, we do bring STM32 products with such accelerators. One of them is a uh, so-called Chrome R accelerator, which is a specific uh, dedicated DMA, which manage all the data uh, transfers from the source memory uh, up to the display through the selected uh, uh, display interface. Uh, plus, on top of uh, the data transfer, it can manage some, some operations with this data. So it can support uh, operations like alpha blending uh, for transparency effects uh, or color format conversion on fly. Uh, and all this without the CPU involvement. And this is the key point that uh, uh, you can achieve really nice, attractive uh, graphical implementation. And here you have a YouTube link uh, uh, to one of the crank uh, demos and implementations where you can really feel and see uh, the performance. And this with minimum CPU load. So the CPU could do it, of course, as well. But then probably uh, you won't uh, have so much uh, performance left for your own application. Uh, so if you involve the Chrome Art and you pick the STM32 with Chrome Art, uh, you could keep a lot of CPU resources for your own application. And the effect can be huge. You see, there are examples where the Chrome Art could save uh, more than 80% of the CPU load. Similar story with uh, the Chrome GRC, which is a bit more specific for, uh, for implementation with rounded displays. Uh, um, so the specific point here is that uh, the Chrome GRC um, enable a function which ensure that uh, the, the memory allocation for your frame buffer will uh, contain only the active pixels from the rounded displays. So all the overhead which is uh, in the corners won't be wasted inside um, your embedded SRAM and uh, can help to save really a uh, lot of uh, kilobytes of, of memory, which is quite expensive at the end. And that's what you pay in the product uh, at the end. You see for uh, let's say 400 times 400 ground display uh, with a 24 bit uh, color depth, you can save uh, close to 100 kilobytes, which is uh, a lot of a lot of space in the, in, inside the SRAM. So that's the Chrome GRC. Uh, next one, next one is the JPEG hardware accelerator. Very useful, uh, especially when uh, making any JPEG uh, compressions or decompression operations, or when you have a need to run a motion JPEG. Uh, uh, video in your application. So to run some tutorials or uh, examples uh, from the customers uh, about your product, then the JPEG accelerator can can help a lot. And again, you can see some uh, some gains uh, that that you can you can reach with this. Uh, when it comes to uh, uh, display sizes, uh, of course, uh, it's not uh, and the displays themselves. Uh, also here, uh, thanks for uh, running uh, and answering the second pool um, where we are asking you what is your typical display size uh, uh, that, that you are using in or you are targeting to use in your application. Uh, so the first thing is the size of the display. Of course, the second, uh, second point to consider is the display interface. And also here uh, from the STM32 side, uh, we are supporting different interfaces starting from the LCD TFT controller down uh, through the MIPI DSI um, up 
today with the two line support, but in future there will be devices uh, extending the MPU family with also four lines, uh, the uh, MIPI DSI support or the parallel uh, classical FM FMC interface or especially uh, for the simple displays, the, the, the SPI. So all this is supported and uh, available for you, for your applications at the end. Finally, the overall interaction uh, and integration inside the product. So the hardware accelerators uh, with the different memories, uh, the bus matrix uh, and the overall architecture makes uh, the design uh, providing you uh, the best performance for implementing the GUI. Finally, the table that I have promised uh, to you. So it could be the starting point if you are looking after the, the, the which STM32 I should pick for my uh, GUI. Uh, so starting from the display size and its interface, uh, today I would uh, simply recommend to look after the, the G0 or G4 type of products for the simple entry-level GUIs. For the more advanced, uh, one of the H7 uh, product uh, part numbers, uh, the exact ones depends on uh, on the other parameters of your design uh, in terms of uh, peripheries uh, and the memory footprint. And of course, if you need the Linux, it, it's clear. And uh, this is today the STM32 MP1. Very likely, most of you have seen uh, our uh, mass market product availability of the new line STM32 U5, which I believe it will be fantastic product, uh, especially when it comes to lower consumption and battery operated applications, uh, needing to, to also display uh, things uh, through graphical user interface. And this family will keep growing and the next uh, extension will bring uh, even more embedded SRAM and, and flash uh, so what I can disclose or oh, disclose already that uh, the, the embedded SRAM uh, will more than triple inside this product. Uh, so really bring a lot of embedded SRAM to, to host your uh, frame buffers for your uh, uh, graphical user interface application. So that was about the hardware. And of course, now making the bridge to, uh, to Nick for, for the ecosystem and software part, uh, the tools and the implementation. Uh, as I said in the beginning, you as a as an end customer, very nice uh, flexibility and freedom to to pick uh, one of the one of your favorite or preferable solution. Of course, uh, Crank Software Emetech One uh, is uh, is one of them and uh, and uh, strongly recommended. And we see this uh, solution being uh, frequently picked by our customers. And um, you will see its benefits uh, right after this. Uh, uh, this uh, presentation that I'm just about to finish uh, with a short summary that uh, really the complete offer uh, that, that you get in terms of hardware and ecosystem uh, today for implementing uh, graphical interfaces with STM32 is rich. We keep uh, enlarging it uh, based on your input, so all your feedback is welcome. And uh, with this, I'm, I'm closing my part. Uh, uh, one thing you should uh, uh, take away from my presentation is if you would like tomorrow to start uh, developing graphic user interface and you are wondering how to start, uh, which product, uh, which tools, uh, which options do I have, uh, remember this link st.com slash stm32gui. Uh, this is the starting page where you could start building up your knowledge and decisions on which product to choose and which solution to select for your own implementation. That's it. Sorry for being a bit longer. Uh, I, but I hope it was useful and uh, I'm passing the word uh, now to Nick and hopefully I'll get also some of your questions. Perfect. Thanks, Roman. So before we pass things over to Nick, uh, I just wanted to kind of quickly kind of give you an overview of like some of the challenges that you face and, and who Crank Software is and, and, and definitely how Storyboard can help you overcome those hurdles. So definitely when it comes to developing GUIs for today's embedded products, things have become increasingly more challenging, especially if you, if you think back to the slides that Roman was sharing where, you know, you had a simple dial and then you just had a simple kind of panel on it. And now we have a complete product that may have a large scaled panel. And, but more importantly is that user expectations have been elevated. So today's consumers really expect an intuitive and modern 
uh, touch experience, not only on the physical device, but the overall quality, the richness, the smoothness, the sophistication that that device provides when it comes to the graphical user interface so much that the user experience has quickly become a defining part of today's products uh, with the ui being one of the main factors that it's often being measured upon and actually driving the value that consumers see in the products and this is because you know consumers are you know, looking for smartphone-like experiences on any device that has a touch screen. So that smartphone has really changed the expectations that consumers have. They expect a fast and seamless interactions that are informative, but also provide a non-cluttered navigation. Also, integrating evolutions in technology no longer only means how do I incorporate that into my hardware, but more importantly is how can it be incorporated into the user interface for the device as well and then of course any time lost or or resources wasted or or coding changes that need to occur really kind of all create delays and delays in getting that product to market on time and this is why the UX or UI considerations are important when it comes to developing hardware products for today's market. Because the overall UX and UI of the product is not only just about the functional aspects, but rather it's about tapping into the emotional attachment that consumers have for that product. For a well-designed product with a well-designed user experience or user interface is perceived to work better or just simply be better than the other products that it's being compared to. It also makes the user feel good about using the product and hence they want to use it more and tell others about this product, which then of course leads to the third one, which builds up that brand loyalty. So that way, when you introduce your next product or when it comes time for them to replace that product, they're going to look to go with what you provided them because it makes them feel good every time they see and they interact with it. And this is where Crank Emitech's GUI development tool storyboard really helps. So if you haven't heard about Crank software before this presentation, I can guarantee you that at some point in time you have uh, utilized or interfaced with a product running an HMI that was built using our GUI development software storyboard. Our technology was, was created to help make the whole development process of creating GUI applications more efficient for embedded platforms. So whether it's traditional markets like automotive or medical or industrial or consumer markets like white goods, IoT or, or wearable devices, they all share a common set of challenges when it comes to looking to deliver an excellent user experience on the device's display. So, the founders of Crank Software set out to build uh, a solution that could help remove uh, the inefficiencies that often frustrated them and their colleagues when it came to developing UIs for embedded products. So Storyboard was designed and developed to really remove or tear down those, those barriers that are typically associated with uh, UI design and development. So really what it does is provides a foundation uh, for accelerated and streamlined GUI development for embedded products that allow both UI developers and designers to actually work together uh, in parallel in a collaborative development workflow. Powerfully simple yet sophisticated is what we often hear from our customers when we ask them about our product. Its easy to use interface really enables them to create UIs quicker and more efficiently that helps them enable to get to market faster. So this is all done by its unique architecture that really kind of decouples the front end UI uh, design and development from the back end logic. This really makes it easier to get started earlier on the development of the UI. It also makes it easier to embrace uh, iterations that naturally occur during the whole development process and really reduces the complexity of developing uh, GUI solutions in an ever-evolving uh, embedded hardware or even product market, resulting in, of course, getting to market quicker, which is important in this day and age. 
So let me kind of break it down how Storyboard helps you kind of do all these things. So all before even any har final hardware decisions have ever been made, the GUI application uh, can be start developed within familiar GUI design tools such as uh, Photoshop or Sketch. And then once they're done being perfected or crafted within that, they can be easily imported into Storyboard, which then those elements become the building blocks uh, of the GUI application that's being created natively within Storyboard. Of course, from there, the GUI applications can be brought to life using Storyboard's integrated animation tool, allowing you to create, edit, and review animations all directly within Storyboard. And of course, any critical UI flow and usability testing can all be performed within Storyboard using its Intuil prototype and simulation functionality. Again, all without requiring any final hardware decisions to be made. Of course, once development begins, designers and developers can easily fine tune the UI based upon feedback um, that they get from design teams or, or different teams within, within the organization. And all those product changes can be implemented without be impacting the actual uh, development that's in progress or causing a complete teardown of code. So, you know, you can easily go back, designers can go back into Photoshop and Sketch and tinker with the design and then simply re-import those changed design files uh, back into Storyboard without uh, impacting progress, like I said, or causing that complete teardown of code. So this, 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 can all be done and allows you to remain in control with our unique uh, tool that uh, allows you to graphically compare and merge uh, only those that you want to re-import back into the tool. So not only this allows you to remain in control, but it really is a, is a, is a more elegant solution for uh, when you have multiple users or multiple developers that are working across maybe a network or remotely in this day and age, um, as you're kind of going in and making those, those changes to the actual UI. And then of course, last but not least, is Storyboard was designed or created to be platform agnostic, which really allows you to help de-risk the embedded device projects, allowing you to maybe start out on the STEM32 uh, H7, and then if you need to expand your product line, maybe to take advantage of maybe 3D graphics, can you easily upgrade to the STM32 MP1. And so it really allows you to provide scalability that allows you to scale up to powerful MPUs or scale down to smaller footprint MCUs to take advantage of either unique care capabilities or maybe it's uh, low power consumption of the hardware. Also provides you portability, so allows you to adapt to changes in your technology stack, so whether it's hardware or, or software OS, altogether, like I said, to take advantage of maybe specific board features such as uh, proprietary graphic engines or libraries, 2D or 3D hardware acceleration, or maybe new and improved memory management functionalities that are being introduced with new hardware. And then last but not least, it really provides you with reusability. So allowing you to reuse your GUI application across different product lines for a consistent brand look, touch and feel, uh, all simply by basically taking that older uh, project file or newer project file and marrying it up with the appropriate runtime library. So I want to quickly discuss three examples of how customers were able to continually update their products, keeping them fresh and resilient to changing market needs, um, all without kind of greatly impacting uh, their time to market. So the goal of the, the first customer was to introduce their next generation fountain dispenser based upon uh, new technologies that consumer feedback uh, provided them from the field. However, the issue or the challenge they faced was that they were looking to do so all for their existing uh, first generation series uh, that were out in the field, uh, as well as their current ones without disrupting everything um, that was going on. Uh, what they found was what the, the, the previous tool they were using, they couldn't do this. And so they looked to crank uh, Amatech and of course Storyboard to do this for them and working closely with them, uh, they were able to create an exceptional user experience that uh, not only worked, of course, on their new version that they were implementing, 
but it was able to work across all the different hardware platforms that they already had out in the field on those existing Gen 1 products. So uh, really allowing to extend the life of their existing products while providing this new and improved uh, user experience. Next up, uh, we had a customer that's a global market leader in branded solutions for mobile living. Uh, what they were looking to do is they were they were looking to kind of capitalize and stay competitive in an, in a in a, a new evolving kind of market segment that enabled the the control and monitoring of the RV system devices such as control lighting, uh, climate awnings, water heater, water pump, etc. Uh, the competition was growing and to expand their product offering, they needed to be nimble and fast. However, in the past, what they found is adding features to the UI was really not only time consuming, but extremely costly. They said it could cost up to $100,000 per iteration. So they came to, they came to Crank Emitech and of course came to Storyboard and they found they were able to not only get up running fast and quickly uh, to be in a position to make key design decisions, uh, but they found that they were able to kind of have a finished prototype in within three months that they could take to the show. Uh, they had this big RV show coming up that they wanted to show off. So, so definitely, you know, not only were they able to bring the GUI development back in house, saving them significant project costs, but they were able to make changes to the products 75% uh, faster than they could using other previous development tools. And then last, finally, a customer who uh, creates uh, cycling products found that their original product was at a crossroads. Uh, since smartphones are really changing consumer expectations of what portable devices could do or could provide. So definitely their goal was to regain market share by uh, modernizing their cycling computer, uh, significantly enhancing its functionality and the user experience so that it aligned closer uh, to what a smartphone would provide. Of course, the challenges that they experienced was that the product required uh, some significant technology updates, uh, hardware, OS, UI, UX. It needed to integrate with their existing assets that they had. So they had this, this wealth of maps that they had built out over the, the course of their, of their life of, of being a company. And they needed to integrate that into the new GUI so it really appeared seamless and not disjointed. And then, of course, they required the ability to accommodate different users' needs uh, by offering different size products with different capabilities. Uh, ultimately, Storyboard's rapid design and iteration technology really enabled them to continually uh, change, test, and refine the experience without uh, worrying about the previous development work being uh, taken down and delaying them get to market. Uh, since the application created using Storyboard was portable, they were also able to accommodate different consumer preferences by having uh, different power devices across different hardware and different screen sizes, uh, really allowing them to also be set up for future needs as well uh, when they wanna offer up an even higher end device. So, what makes Storyboard different? Really, Storyboard was designed, like I said, to remove those barriers that are typically associated with UI design development. It was purpose-built uh, for collaboration around the user experience. It was designed specifically to help developers and designers to work together, to iterate with ease in the quest for creating the optimal end user experience. Uh, it's low code to no code GUI development framework really helps lower the barriers to entry for software development uh, allowing maybe uh, junior developers to work on uh, the basic core elements while more senior team members can focus on more important tasks. Its distinct separation of design and code um, environments really helps separate that front end design from that back end logic, really enabling both, again, developers and designers to, to update and test the app at the same time in parallel without destroying the work um, that's being done. It has a well-defined API that connects the two environments when it comes time to deploy it. Like I said, it's rapid design and iteration, re-import technology um, really allows you to start development uh, within tools like Photoshop or Sketch and then import them, really simplifying and streamlining the whole creation process. And then of course, when changes occur, re-import those changes into it 
uh, with all the previously established events and actions uh, retaining uh, their value. Also, the graphical comparison tool, like I said, really allows you to remain in control of which changed content you wish to accept and deploy within the final GUI application uh, before committing those changes to the final design. Its embedded animation tool uh, really allows you to, to track all the changes made to an application, automatically create a new animation reflecting the activity between the start and end points uh, of those change items. And then last but not least, it's uh, platform and OS independence uh, really provides the ability for you to, to leverage the wide depth of different hardware that ST Microelectronics has in their portfolio, really allowing you to take advantage of whether it's, it's uh, low power um, for cost efficiency or great 3D graphics, uh, for high end with the MP1. So I'm gonna pass things over to Nick right now and uh, Nick's gonna take you in to uh, Storyboard and present you, uh, show you this all uh, live in action. So uh, Nick, uh, take it away. Hi everybody. And I'd like to uh, say a big thank you to uh, Scott and Roland for the, the awesome introduction. My name is uh, Nick Schultz. I'm the field application engineer here at Crank Software, and uh, I'm going to be handling the demo today. So what I really want to show you in uh, a little bit of time is um, how we can scale between two different class of processors uh, from ST Micro. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through a uh, import process where we can bring some content in um, from a design file. So this is a Photoshop file we have. Um, we're going to build up an application. We're going to export it for a uh, STM32 H7B3 uh, development kit. And then we are going to take that same application and run it on the STM32 MP1 running Linux. And that's, uh, you know, a uh, MPU processor has OpenGL, uh, a little more capability. And uh, we're going to uh, do all that in uh, a little over 20 minutes. So. Without further ado, uh, we're going to start off, uh, as I indicated, in a uh, design file. So we've got a uh, home automation uh, design here with uh, sort of a pop-out menu um, that we'll build an animation with, a few different screens. So you can see thermostat screen, weather, and settings, internationalization, voice, stuff like that. And all of our content is organized in a way that we map to the naming conventions in Storyboard. So I'm not going to spend too much time going through all the nitty gritty of this. Um, we've got lots of documentation and cheat sheets to show you how you can structure your content. Um, the same actually applies to uh, other design tools like Sketch as well. But all that being said is you lay out your content in screens. Each screen contains multiple layers. Layers are uh, groupings of content. So think of uh, the background or the scrolling menu or the navigation. And um, as example here, you can see toggle the menu options off. And those then have multiple controls in them, controls being elements that you can interact with and add behavior to it. So following those naming conventions, you can take a design file like this, import it into Storyboard and just hit the ground running. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to close this down show you um, this is sort of the first thing you'll see when you open up storyboard for the first time you've got links to your tutorials documentation support forums some getting started videos on our website mini series really good resources there and um, you'll probably take a peek close this and then never really look at it again so if you need to go back and find it that's tucked under the help menu and First thing I will do, as you can see here, new project from Photoshop content. I'm actually running on a Linux desktop. So if you're um, a developer who's uh, using Mac, Windows, or Linux, doesn't matter. You can uh, run, run Storyboard. And the nice thing about that is uh, you can collaborate with other designers and developers using the tool on different operating systems as well. If you were on a Mac, you would also have icons and options for Sketch import. Since Sketch is a Mac-only tool, there's a um, requirement for that. But I'll select new project from Photoshop content. I'll go ahead, I will browse 
to my PSD and I will import it leaving everything as default. Our, uh, our tool is parsing that file right now, slicing all the images up, laying out the text, and as you see here, uh, we have our six screens. Uh, they look the same as what we had in uh, the design file. And uh, if I were to expand them, look at the, um, the application hierarchy, it's laid out the same way as well with um, menu content, uh, our scrolling menu layer, stuff like that. So the first thing that I actually want to do is I want to build up some, some navigation between uh, screens in our application. And the nice thing about this is, you know, we're, we're in a world where um, just about all devices nowadays are, are touch enabled. So the expectation is we have things like uh, swipe gestures for, for navigating. So to do that, I'm going to right click on one of our screens. So in this case, the thermostat screen, I'm going to add an action. And this is how we hook up behavior in a storyboard application. So all um, actions are event driven, meaning that an event, so something, um, you know, something abstract, it could be a touch input, it could be a um, custom event from your your system hardware buttons or in this case you know we're going to use the event that a screen has rendered so screen show post so that just means after we've shown the display we're going to configure our drag uh, transition and this is where you can select all the parameters for what you'd like to do so i want to do a path transition so the screen will will drag uh, kind of create a nice carousel effect and if we drag to the right we can go to the weather screen and if we drag to the left why don't we go to one of the settings screens so we can do a nice uh, sort of carousel style rotation and i'll leave the rest of the settings default you could play with them if you want change the frame rates uh, easing curves things like that but for now i will stick with that and you can see here once um once i've done that we have our new event action binding and then we can go through and, and do the exact same thing on the weather screen, adding an action, post, configure the drag transition. And in this time, when we go left, we're going to go back to the thermostat and right, we are going to go to the settings security panel. And then finally, the same thing on our security screen, add our action. And in this case, moving to the right, we go back to the thermostat and to the left, we go back to the weather Hit finish. And assuming I did everything right, if we simulate and run our application there, you can see we have a nice drag carousel effect where we can cycle through and it even goes back the other way. Perfect. So we're pretty happy with that. Um, you know, we've got some nice sort of user interactions. But the next thing we want to do is uh, do something with this menu bar. You know, it's just sitting out there, it's static. Let's build up an animation to, to hide and show it. So I'm going to go ahead and play around with that. Going back to our thermostat screen, you can see here we have this scrolling menu layer. And within it, so if you remember, I said screens contain layers. Layers contain... Um, elements called controls and all of these controls are currently um, visible on the screen so instead of having them visible i'm actually going to shoot them off the screen let's say negative 160 there we go and from there um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to animate them out so we're just going to create an animation that modifies the x property so to do that we can toggle recording and animation in our in our editor and that's going to bootstrap um, the main elements for building an animation and storyboard and you may notice we have an animation timeline uh, tab down at the bottom so that's going to populate that with some content for us so since we've hit record you can see this red border around the screen and we're going to start making changes to the editor so instead of negative 160 we're going to set that content back at zero and then I'm going to close off the animation. So I'm going to say new animation. Um, 
say menu open and single iteration and we'll use absolute values. So if we expand our view right now, you can see um, this timeline has been bootstrapped where we're controlling the X property of all of those different controls. So the background, the menu nodes, you know, the blue one with the X and then all the other layers there. And we could actually preview that to see what it looks like. And it's, it's okay. You know, it's pretty, pretty static. It's pretty quick, only 500 milliseconds, but you know, we can do something a little bit nicer than that. So I'm going to go down. I'm going to select all of my nodes here. And instead of linear, I'm going to select a more fluid easing curve. So this ease in, ease out, and maybe even give it my own little rate there. Hit save. And then after that, I'm going to start dragging the elements around and create a bit of a, a stepped stagger in effect. So, you know, just do this freehand here, but I want them to pop in one after the other for something that looks a little bit more um, interesting. So do that. All right, take a look, preview that. Perfect. So it looks a little bit better. It slides in, we can reverse it, it slides out. Great. So back out of here, you can see now we have this animation in our, our timeline list. And then if I want to use this control at the top here, I can right click, add an action. And as you might expect, we're going to start out with a touch and then select animation. I'll say menu open. And in this case, I don't want it to clean up. So I'm going to actually reverse the animation um, when the user presses the, uh, the close button. And uh, so we want to leave that uh, false so we can reverse that. Hit finish. And I know that the main menu control button, so if we were to just quickly look at that, that has the X on it. So if the user presses anywhere on there, we'll close it off. So right click. There we go. Add an action, touch, animation, menu open. We'll start from 100%, reverse the animation, and then we can clean it up. Hit finish. So save that. You can see now we have our open animation and the close. So that's pretty neat. Um, you know, the last thing I always like to do is introduce how we can do a little bit of um, scripting in our application. So, you know, controlling this um, this this value here, we can pretty easily easily do that. And um, to do that, what we'll do is we'll create what's called a variable. And a variable in Storyboard is simply a way to dynamically manipulate a property at runtime. And the animations were actually doing that behind the scenes, manipulating the X coordinate. But anything here that you see that has these little angle braces um, with the plus icon, you can bind a variable to and create your own custom ones. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and create a new variable at the application level called temperature and hit finish. And then the reason I did it at the application level is I actually want to share this value across multiple screens. So if we go to the weather screen, you can see there's a, a value here. And just for fun, you know, I realized that this in a real application, you'd probably uh, have this data coming in from a network source or maybe a external weather station outside of your home. But for now, I'll just bind that value as well to demonstrate this. So variables have a one to many relationship and multiple elements can reference that variable. So if you need to make uh, changes to content in the UI, you simply need to adjust the variable and the controls will update themselves. So now that we've bound that variable to those two controls, we can take our plus button here, right click, add an action, touch Lua script, give it a function name, so CB temp up, finish. And then on this action binding, hit edit, it'll pre-create that function stub for us. So 
we'll go through, we'll do some placeholder uh, Lua since I realize that, you know, you probably wouldn't want to hard code this, but for example purposes, we're going to go ahead and do that. In a real application, you'd get this event from an external source and then update the data. But for fun, we'll just do this and then we'll call function GRE set value. And this function takes a key and value pair, key being the variable, which if you remember was temperature, and the value being our new temp value. So just for fun, we'll do the down as well. And I also want to add the degree symbol to it for presentation purposes. There we go. I'll set that to be minus and change the function name. Perfect. So now if we run our application, you can see we have the up. Oops, and we need to bind up our event here. Add an action, touch. Lua script down, finish, run that again. And we now have up and down as well as our animating menu and our swipe events. You may have noticed some of the buttons already have the press release and outbound events hooked up. And that's because in the design file, there's a naming convention you can specify it to tell storyboard what you want the active and inactive state of buttons to be. So another little time-saving feature that can really help you bootstrap your UI development. So now that we're happy with our application, this is where we're actually gonna go through and create some export configurations. So to do this, and you know, we wanna prep the, the application for running on an MCU. So, MCUs are a little bit smaller than what you might get on the um, MPU environments. Um, storage and memory are usually at a premium. So we can optimize this a little bit and we can clean up some of our unused images. So these are images that uh, may have come through during the import, some text fields, um, you know, things that aren't referenced. And it'll check the same for any fonts that we're not using, which in this case, uh, none were found. Hit finish delete those files. All right, so we've cleaned up the images and now we can go through and create a export configuration. And the export configuration simply describes how we're gonna store our assets on the file system. So this default configuration, this is perfect for what we're gonna run on the MP1 running Linux. But you know, for now, we actually want to use the configuration for uh, SDM board, and I've pre-created this, but all that to say is we're going to use a virtual file system, and you can see here, um, there's not a lot of stuff in RAM. Most of this is actually being stored in, um, in Flash, and you know, if I were to switch this back, the reason for that is we're going to be going through and storing our images in a raw decompressed uh, state and we'll be able to draw them directly directly from there. Uh, the other thing that we want to call out is the image format. So we want to store them, you know, direct 888 uh, full color and alpha and then set the start alignment here. So this will be, um, you know, what we need to do to export for the uh, STM 32H7B3. And more information about all these values and, and why we put certain ones here are found in our integration package. But um, this basically describes our data, where it's going to be stored, and how we render content. So I'll go ahead and close that off. And if we jump over to the application export configurations, this is where we can go ahead and configure how we want to export our app. So for a MCU, we're going to select the storyboard embedded resource header and our STM configuration right here. We're going to apply that, run, 
and then a header file is going to be generated for us. Perfect. So if we open up our Project Explorer, you can see here we have this storyboard um, engine model header file. And if you were to take that and switch over to uh, the STM32 cube environment and uh, drop it into the application. So if we look at the, um, the application include directory, you can see here um, you can drop it in and uh, there you go, storyboard engine model.h. So I've already dropped it in just to um, speed everything up here. But all you need to do and uh, go into the svengine underscore task.c file, put in the new definition. So I'm using a, a demo project for this platform. And if I show you my webcam really quickly, you can see it's currently currently running one of our home control demos. So we're going to update this board and uh, flash it. So I've, I've changed the, the path to the model. And now I'm going to uh, compile and run. So go ahead, debug as, make the changes. And you can see here, it's going to go through, it's going to build this project and um, it's going to deploy it to the hardware. So this is going to work away in, in the background. And while we do this, um, I'm actually going to go over and um, show the steps that I've taken. we need to take for the MPU. So cube environment's going on. It'll give us a notification when it's ready. If we go back to the storyboard environment, this is where we can actually change. Oh, you can see we got a notification. It's uh, starting the flash process. You can see here the, uh, the display is blanked. And this is where, if we wanted to export our application for an MPU, change our export to a GAP file. Um, again, keep our, our default configuration there. Hit apply. And um, the last thing is we can actually SCP transfer the application to a, uh, a target. So in this case, I want to go ahead and select uh, my IP address, so I have my MP1 plugged in. We're going to deploy the application under slash user slash crank slash app, and I'm going to hit apply and run. So this is deploying over SCP, and we should get a notification. Perfect. And um, if we open up our webcam and a terminal, you can see here I've got the connection to the MP1 ready. So I have a script on there that see here, it's going to run our application. There's a uh, path to our engine that's already deployed on the target. You can see right there and some output parameters for it to run. So if I were to go launch SB, you can see now that we have a running application on the hardware. So I've got uh, the up the down buttons, I've got swiping events, and of course, our animation. Now, if we switch back over to the cube environment, you can see here, we're ready to switch over into debug view. And uh, on first launch, it breaks in the, uh, the main function. So I'm gonna hit run and get uh, the webcam up and ready. There you go. Hit run and you can see we have the exact same application running there. Same functionality, swipe events, and of course our animation. So that's all it takes. Um, really it is all about designing and building your application um, for, um, you know, based on your design, uh, looking at, you know, design as a, a big part of your development cycle. And then it's very quick and easy to run and deploy it on uh, multiple processors uh, and different hardware and software combinations. So hopefully you guys found that useful. 
and uh, I'm going to hand it back over to uh, to Scott to close this up. So thank you very much for your time and uh, look forward to seeing what you do. And if you have any questions, uh, we're here to answer them. Thanks, Nick. Let me just go back to my screen. Perfect. All right. Uh, so just uh, before we jump into your questions, I just want to kind of just uh, remind you all that, you know, the the depth of the uh, STM32 device portfolio is fantastic. And so definitely, you know, if you're looking uh, to have a range of products from low end to high end, uh, you know, no need to look any further because you have a wealth of, of devices that were just really made for graphics performance and, of course, for uh, smooth animations on any size screen. So definitely uh, check it out. Also, like I said, you know, when it comes down to it, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when changes need to occur. And that could be the biggest hurdle that most uh, embedded projects face because it could really derail it. It could, you know, end up wasting code, wasting time, wasting resources that really delay you. But uh, storyboards, um, uh, iteration and, and re-import technology really makes it easier uh, for you to kind of start embracing changes easily, more cost effectively into uh, your design with the end goal of really providing that optimal uh, end user experience. Uh, if you haven't already, you can, uh, you know, try out uh, Storyboard for free. Uh, we have a 30 day free trial that can be accessed at uh, cranksoftware.com uh, slash free trial, as well as demo images for uh, a lot of the, um, so these are pre-made demo images that you can download and put onto the ST32 device, STM, sorry, STM32 devices. Uh, so that way you can really kind of kick the tires on the graphical performance and, and see, you know, what is there for you. Um, also, we have a wealth of videos and getting started videos and, and, and articles to really kind of get you going uh, and utilizing uh, Storyboard. So with that being said, let's uh, jump into the questions that uh, that you guys have posed to us. Uh, so let me just take a look here. So the first one is for you, Roman. How do I know which uh, STM32 is supporting which accelerator? Yes, so first of all, thanks for the question. Uh, it, it's a good one. So uh, uh, normally uh, the, there are a few ways to, uh, to, uh, to answer this. Uh, or to, to find out. Uh, the first one is uh, to use the product selector uh, engine on our st.com or second one is to use the, the Cubemix uh, uh, tool which is also embedded inside the Cube ID where this tool enables you to, to make a certain filtering uh, depending on the functions and features you, you want to use uh, including some of the accelerators. So uh, that's uh, the way I would uh, normally recommend to, uh, to go. Perfect. Uh, I have another question for you is, may you share the link to a display manufacturer? Um, okay, <laughs> it's a good question. So uh, today, uh, for if I take the example of our discovery kits, uh, normally for all the discovery kits, uh, we, we do share a schematic uh, Gerber files and also the, the bomb list, including the part number of the display. Um, so if you would like to take uh, this uh, type of display as a kind of reference uh, for your own developments, I would recommend to, to, to take uh, this uh, part number and then uh, search uh, over the net. Unfortunately, myself directly, I don't have any, any direct links to the, to the display manufacturers. Perfect. Uh, I have one for us and I'll take this one. You talked about using Photoshop and Sketch to create uh, the GUI design, do I need to use a design tool with Storyboard? Uh, the answer to that question is no, not at all. Uh, we often talk about design tools because, you know, uh, many of the customers that we work with that are focused on um, providing a user experience often either work with a design firm or maybe have some designers in-house uh, that utilize tools like Photoshop and Sketch to start kind of, you know, uh, fleshing out what the, the UI or the HMI is going to look like. And so what we did is we kind of built the hooks in to allow uh, you to import those design files to really make it uh, quicker and easier. However, if you have the individual assets, um, you can easily import those libraries into 
uh, storyboard natively and start uh, creating it within the workspace and building it from, I don't want to use the word scratch, but building it from scratch. Uh, next question, does storyboard support vector graphics? Uh, again, I, I could probably handle this one, Nick, or unless you want to jump in, but uh, the answer that the simple and short sweet answer to that is yes. Uh, we do support vector graphics, mm -hmm. which allows you then to uh, easily resize within storyboard um, the your GUI application for maybe if you started uh, down a particular uh, road towards one particular hardware with a certain size screen and you needed to pivot and do another one, you can easily do that. Of course, once uh, you export it out, uh, we do compress that so that way uh, it's it's easier for, for running on the hardware and takes up less memory. Uh, Nick, is there anything else you want to add to that? No, that's, uh, that's great. So I was just going to say, uh, I just wanted to make sure that there's a distinction between at design time, you'd be using the vector graphics and then at export and runtime, we, we export the appropriately sized graphic in, in raster format, which is uh, better for, 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 for performance on the embedded system. So uh, yeah, good, good job, Scott. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, another question for you, uh, Nick, is what is the model of the dev boards used uh, during your, your demonstration with the storyboard? Yeah, so um, the development kit for the MCU is the STM32H7B3 discovery kit and the uh, STM32MP1. Um, I forget exactly the, uh, the model there, but uh, it's sort of the standard evaluation kit, um, the latest revision off of the STM32 websites. Happy to follow up uh, with the exact version. Um, and I'll, I'll look at that shortly. Perfect. Uh, next up, it says, great presentation. Thank you. Well, you know, thank you. Uh, thank you for taking time and thank you for your kind words. Is there any integration with the STM32 Cube MX? Yeah, so, great question. Um, yeah, well, I was just going to say that, you know, we, we have integration packs that build on top of the BSPs provided from uh, STM30, uh, the, the Cube IDE. Uh, we aren't built directly into the into the Cube tooling just yet, but I know there have been conversations about uh, fostering tighter integration into the uh, the Cube MX environment. And Scott, you probably have a little bit more details since you tend to handle some of the partner stuff. Yep. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll throw that one back to you. Yeah, so without stealing any thunder, we are uh, working with the team. Uh, they have made some changes from, from an integration standpoint, making it uh, a lot more flexible uh, on their end to really kind of bring in and expand the partner ecosystem. So we are uh, currently working on that, and uh, I don't have an exact time frame. I would love to say, hey, it would be available for you next week, but uh, stay tuned because we will uh, release a, a press release and, you know, and put out some, some word out there uh, once that is fully integrated. Which then brings me to the next question is, I'm developing a new um, custom board based on the STEM, uh, the STM32 H730 MCU. I'm using the Cube IDE for development. Uh, you ran into some issues and found it hard with uh, touch GFX. Uh, so you started the, pro I started a project with the Cube IDE, so can I use crank software instead? Can I relate it to my code on Cube IDE? I have uh, the STM32H735G DK to start with. Great question. And a lot of little little steps uh, involved along the way there. So um, right out of the, the gate, the H7 class processor, um, you know, it spans a few different uh, development kit iterations with, you know, different memory layouts and configurations. But uh, the runtime and integration that I used on my particular development kit, um, those libraries and, and uh, drop-ins would be compatible. Uh, there would be a little bit of work in, involved in terms of making sure, um, you know, we're, we're mapping to the, the internal external memories, depending on how your, your memory is configured but that's where our integration guide could help. Um, given that you also have some existing code uh, already in place, uh, we provide an interface to send events and data. So, um, you know, theoretically, uh, you should be able to leverage that. 
um, or we also have um, some functions that you can use to just in inject events directly into the UI. So the UI will run as its own task in a fairly isolated environment. There'll just be a few callouts for, um, you know, initializing the display, uh, how you want to update the display. So you're basically uh, choosing which buffer, frame buffer you're writing to and which one you're copying to the display, uh, a task for input, but you know, the rest of that should um, be fairly isolated from, from your code. So uh, a lot of words to say yes. And um, obviously uh, if you had more details or wanted to follow up uh, with us uh, via the sales or support channels, then, uh, that would be fantastic, and we could go into this in a little bit more depth as well. Perfect. Thanks, Nick. And last question. Uh, this is your, your chance to get your question in if you do have one. Uh, and thank you for everybody that stayed on the line so far. Uh, is there any way to tell how large uh, the GUI app is in Storyboard? Yep. Great question. And, um, you know, something with limited time today, uh, you know, lots of other features that I didn't get to showcase in the tool, but we have a metrics view that will give you a, um, you know, a, an overview of your application, the, the resources you're using. So the images, how much storage they take in uh, flash versus um, uh, RAM. And you, you would have seen just a, a sort of quick glimpse of it when looking at the configuration, as you could see some of the the, the memory and um, file system storage on the right of that panel. But there's a more in-depth view that you can look at and it'll break you break down how much memory you're using per screen or what resources are using how much. And um, you know that's a, a really good finger in the wind to make sure that you're staying within the constraints of your system and um, you know being efficient with memory. Perfect. Doesn't seem to be any uh, additional questions come in. So I want to thank everybody for taking time uh, out of your busy day to join us today uh, to learn a little bit more about ST Microelectronics and, of course, Crank Emitech Storyboard and for posing all your great questions to us. So thank you very much and hope to see you on our next webinar. Have a great day.